Hello everybody and welcome. Yes, Making History, the new expansion for Kerbal Space Program is now officially available via Steam or directly on kerbalspaceprogram.com for $14.99. Since I first gave you a little preview for that, some things have changed until the final build and I also found out some new stuff during a livestream I did last week. So let's revisit the DLC and also talk about KSP 141, the new update that was released alongside the Making History expansion. Let's start with the orange tank and yes, the pipes are back. A lot of people were a bit cross that the big 2.5 meter diameter tank no longer had pipes running down its side. Well, they are back in KSP 1.4.1 as you can see. I think that's proof that the developers still listen to the fans. Staying with tanks, since the orange skin is a variant, the icons for switching variants have changed in the build menu. And yes, I can pronounce variant correctly, thanks for pointing that out in my original video. I promise to do better. Let's stick with the color orange for a while. The stats for the little foil style tanks have been corrected. Especially the dumpling had some wrong mass numbers, but it's all good now. Now, here are a few things in making history I have not found out up until the livestream I did last week. First up, thanks to my buddy Matt Lahn for pointing out that you can switch the new structural panels between white, dark and gold. That should make for some interesting build options. And it improved the look of my Apollo style Moonlander a lot as well. I also found out that you can fold the new rover wheels. When folded up you can fit a rover inside a Mark II cargo bay. Not really lunar rover territory since that was semi disassembled, but still nice nonetheless. And then there is the parachute cover for the Apollo style command module. It's basically a 1.25 to 0.625 meter adapter with a shroud. Under that shroud is enough space to put some parachutes. Careful though, there is a bug of sorts that the game believes the shroud is still in place if you deploy it via an action group. In that case, parachutes inside will not deploy. You need to stage it and in the correct order at that, meaning first the shroud, then the parachutes. Otherwise your crew might die. And we don't want that, do we? Now, something a lot of you will be happy to hear, the jet engine sounds have been made less annoying. Here, have a listen at the same engines in KSP 131, 140 and 141. I think this is an improvement to the 140, but I'm not sure about it compared to the 131. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. KSP 141 also includes some bug fixes, which include the IVA view for the upgraded 3-man capsule. This is nice! Also, many mods have already been upgraded for KSP 14, including three of my favorites. Scatterer, Environmental Visual Enhancement, and docking port alignment indicator. This makes playing with the new version a lot more pleasant. 
Some very important mods are still missing, for instance Kerbal Alarm Clock and Transfer Window Planner. Kerbal Engineer sort of works, but has some problems with the new making history parts. All in all, KSP 141 is a nice step up from the bigger 1.4 upgrade and as I mentioned before, I welcome the making history expansion, since I believe it can give Kerbal Space Program sort of a second wind during its long lifetime. And as somebody rightly pointed out, we could probably take an upgraded Saturn V style rocket made with the 5 meter parts from the DLC up to ELU. Stay tuned for that, I hope I will be able to release a video on that very soon. If you're eager to watch that video, please subscribe to my channel and make sure to activate the notification bell and also follow me on Twitter since YouTube currently doesn't reliably inform subscribers about new videos for reasons. But I tweet every video I publish so at least that works. And as always, thanks for watching, goodbye.